This is Goody Reader News with Michael Kozlowski. Hey folks, today I'm going to talk to you about audiobooks and I really think that audiobooks right now is the next big thing and the next, you know, the last time I had an indication that there were going to be two big things, the e-reader industry happened and the tablet industry happened. Uh, we've been covering this since like 08, so we've really seen the birth of two different industries and I think that digital audiobooks now are right on the cusp of uh, being something really big. and. I have some statistics, some comments, and things that I want to talk to you about today uh, based on a really huge article that I wrote on Goody Reader about it. So in 2007, there was only 3,000 digital audiobooks that were produced. Uh, this figure rose exponentially in 2011 to over 12,000. In 2013, there was 20,000. And in 2014, 35,000 were published. So there's a lot more content being produced now. And this is contributing to some big money. Uh, the global audiobook industry, both CDs, tapes, and digital Digital. It's currently worth $2.6 billion. And uh, in a New York Times uh, piece on audiobooks, they said in the first eight months of 2014, sales were up 28% over the same period last year, far outstripping the growth of ebooks, which only rose 6%. One of the biggest markets in the world is not the US or the UK, but it's actually in Germany. Uh, in a recent survey, uh, Germans consume more audiobooks than ebooks. Uh, close to 5 million Germans have purchased an audiobook, which accounts for 7% of the overall population, which is a, a very hot and growing segment. Not only on the, uh, on the consumer side are audiobooks getting big, but in the libraries, they are absolutely exploding. There is a number of major players involved in audiobooks. There's uh, 3M, Baker and Taylor, Hoopla and Overdrive. So when you borrow an ebook, uh, sorry, an audiobook from the library, chances are you're borrowing it from one of those four providers. When you look at libraries these days embracing digital, 95% of all US libraries have a digital collection. So this includes ebooks, audiobooks, uh, streaming video, and uh, academic resources. So libraries now are very savvy in the respects of embracing digital and a lot of them now are starting to buy audiobooks. Audiobooks fundamentally work a little bit differently than ebooks. Uh, ebooks come from major publishers, they come from small presses, they come from self published authors. Uh, but with audiobooks, many of the top distributors lean on third parties for their full catalog of content. Uh, 3M and Baker and Taylor both get their audio editions from Findaway World, which is the current market leader in production. Uh, Findaway has a catalog of 50,000 titles and maintains production studios, narrators, and a crew in New York. Uh, Overdrive has their own internal solution where they approach publishers directly and don't do business with companies such as Audible or Findaway World. Tom Mercer, marketing manager of 3M Cloud said, uh, we, are, we see a tremendous opportunity to grow in the audio space in 2015. Right now we're two weeks into the real world of audio, but customers seem to really like our solution. Our initial beta feedback was very positive. One of the more interesting companies involved in the audio space is Hoopla, and they do things a lot differently. They have adopted the pay-per-use model. So what happens with libraries who do business with, say, Overdrive or 3M or Baker and Taylor, they basically pick and choose. So they say, you know, we'll we'll get this title, you know, Gone Girls, a ma major motion picture. The book is selling like gangbusters. Let's carry a few copies of the audiobook too so they make a few purchases and 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 make it available with hoopla they have about 25,000 audiobooks and what happens is when a library wants to do business with them the entire hoopla catalog is available for patrons to browse and the libraries only pay if a customer checks out the audiobook which i think is a cool value proposition because it really shows that if you're browsing for audiobooks 
and you see one library with a catalog of like 500 titles and then you see another library with a catalog of like 25,000 titles you're gonna be more engaged in a greater selection because chances are there's more content made available and libraries simply just establish budgets so they say you know we only want to spend 2,500 a month on audiobooks once that thresholds being met no more can be loaned out so it's a way that libraries can offer a lot of content but uh, stay in a budget um, Cheryl Herman marketing director at Penguin Random House books on tape and listening library said our library sales for digital audio uh, uh, are up nearly 35% over 2014 we're offering more and more titles on audio and we're not alone in that there are more players entering the market and more titles overall being published more than ever speaking of publishing audible is the undisputed market leader they have a six-year advantage over any other company involved in the audiobook space uh, i spoke with matthew thornton the director of communications at audible he said audible content includes over 180,000 audiobooks and other spoken word programming from leading audiobook publishers broadcasters entertainers magazine and new newspaper publishers and business information providers non-audiobook uh, non-audiobook content includes lectures uh, language lessons comedy and periodicals audible has added 40,000 titles to the store in 2014 a very slight increase versus 2013 in both 2013 and 2014 audible studios and acx productions account for just half of all titles added to the audible storefront uh, acx or uh, the Audible Creation Exchange is actually awesome. What it is, it's it's a, basically a marketplace where uh, authors and publishers that have unused rights to audiobooks uh, make posts. So I'm I'm an author. I wrote a book, and I say, and I have the audiobook rights, and I say, like, look, I want to make an audiobook out of this. I have this much to spend, and then you'll have like narrators and authors, or um, you know, spoken word people uh, bid on it. So people will like underbid each other in order to get your business, and then you'll be able to make an audiobook version having a full-fledged production studio a professional voice actor uh, reading it all out and on average you're spending anywhere between uh, 300 to about 1500 for uh, the fully completed audiobook and then you can sell it on iTunes you can sell it on audible you can sell it wherever you want and this is a the audiobook in conjunction with writing an ebook um, is great because you can almost double dip you could sell the audiobook you could sell the ebook and you could appeal to people who prefer just are, are audio people and then you appeal to the people that are just enamored with actually reading books audiobooks these days are full of star power now more than ever there's famous actors personalities that are narrating the book but this is making audiobooks a little bit more expensive you look at the faults in our stars by john green it costs 4.99 for the ebook but it costs 17 dollars for the audiobook max brooks seminal world war z which was made into a movie with brad pitt but the book itself sold like gangbusters it's 9.99 but the audiobook version will cost 28 dollars so why are audiobooks on a consumer level so ridiculously overpriced i had no idea until I uh, spoke to a lot of people that were a lot smarter than me in audiobook industry they said it comes down to studio costs which the publishers call cost per finished hour each audiobook on average is about 12 hours uh, which costs on average 300 to 400 an hour they also have to take into account for multiple takes and editing the finished product after it's all said and done is normally around five to six thousand dollars uh, for a major publisher or a medium publisher engaged in making audiobooks now some companies rely on star power to draw attention to the digital edition uh, the aforementioned World War Z uh, they had 21 different voice actors everyone from Simon Pegg to uh, rapper and uh, fledgling actor common to even uh, famed director Martin Scorsese uh, even hiring just one famous person to narrate the book drives the production costs up exponentially. The average cost is now $1,000 to $1,500 per book hour, and the final product normally costs around $17,000. 
uh, Matthew Thornton explained a bit on how Audible embraces star power. One of the ways we work to improve the overall customer experience of listening to audiobooks is in elevating the quality of audiobook performance, embracing A-list celebrities, um, including actors like Colin Firth, Dustin Hoffman, Kate Winslet, and Susan Sarandon, as well as up-and-coming young actors. Uh, Audible offers narration workshops in a lot of the famous, uh, you know, uh, Juilliard Academy and, and, and things in New York. And they've had uh, great success with celebrity name projects like uh, The Great Gatsby uh, or Ben Stiller performing The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Um, we equate it to the theater in your ears and raise the visibility of this burgeoning art form. So you look at everyone's heavily invested in audiobooks you know uh, 1500 to 15,000 is the norm and so not every book can be made into an audiobook so publishers have to selectively choose which audio edition that they make basically anything that's option for a movie is the first thing that they do as well as anything on the new york times bestseller list they do that because it's it's in the news, people are doing book reviews, doing the audio edition just makes sense. But when it comes to books not on the New York Times bestseller list that aren't optioned for a movie, they have to be very selective because not everything is gonna sell, which is why the cost of an audiobook is so much more because they have to sell less in order to make their money back. And so if they're selling less, they have to drive the price up uh, even more. One of the things that I found very interesting was that not only are nonfiction and fiction audiobooks being made, but actually newspapers are embracing them. And this is actually, it kind of surprised me. And then all of a sudden it started to make sense. Um, the Guardian newspaper forged a relationship with Audible. Every week, the Guardian Audio Edition will hit Audible and give you a feel for the UK's book scene and new book releases. Uh, Audible in turn has sponsored uh, some aspects of the Guardian's website. And so what the Guardian started to do is they started to make audio editions of their top stories to be able to be, be made available right online and then it, they send them over to Audible. Um, so one of the big trends in journalism in 2014 has been uh, producing audio editions of top stories. Uh, the Guardian did it last year and regularly garners anywhere between 17 and 30,000 listens per each audio edition. And this has prompted the New York Times, the NPR, uh, the New Yorker, and even Goody Reader has started to make uh, audio editions of the top stories. And what we found is we've done it with maybe three or four of our articles. And in a lot of cases, the audio uh, listens have more listens than the article itself because we distribute it to uh, iTunes, to SoundCloud, uh, to various other platforms that have uh, a greater audience that is enamored with audio. So I really think in 2015, one of the huge trends that we're going to see uh, with blogs and, and, you know, like the Huffington Post and, and CNET and, and uh, IGN and things like that is audio editions of the big stories in addition to the video and the podcasts. So what's next? Well, Barnes & Noble just got involved in audiobooks. Uh, they're dealing with Findaway World, and this is one of the first times that Barnes & Noble has really got behind company-wide behind audiobooks. Uh, they offered audiobooks in the past, but they did it through Overdrive, so you need to actually download the Overdrive app in order to listen to audiobooks. That was short-lived. Barnes & Noble never promoted it. It was only through diligent research that I ever even realized that Barnes & Noble was selling audiobooks. But now that they've developed a customized app for Android, uh, I was told uh, by the lead developer in charge, uh, Kassib Zafar, Vice President of US Digital Content and media uh, he said that in all of the stores they're gonna be making a nook audio section and really drawing attention to audiobooks uh, they're also hyping the fact that 50,000 available and for I think until about the end of January every week they're adding five titles and then you can pick two to listen to for free uh, no credit card no sign up is required and Barnes Noble just basically wants to make everyone aware hey you know we're invested in audiobooks and they're not alone a lot of companies are now getting involved in audiobooks because they see this as the next big market 
Will serious ebook readers ever switch from ebooks to audiobooks, or will people embrace audiobooks on the level that they've embraced ebooks over the last five years? Well, it doesn't look too likely, at least from our own research. We ran a poll and asked 384 people if they listened to them. 33% have never listened to an audiobook, and 23% said they tried, but then they tapped out, you know, before they ever finished a listening to the audiobook. Only a paltry 14% said they listen to audiobooks regularly, which is a small demographic and it's a very small percentage of listeners. And people who visit our Goody Reader obviously are very digitally savvy. So uh, this poll has a lot of credence. I'd like to hear from you. Do you think audiobooks will be the next big trend? Do you listen to them at all or regularly? And under what circumstances? How many do you listen to in any given year? Do you think that audiobooks in 2015 will start to be a really big thing. Drop a comment below for Goody Reader News. Maybe